I produce and perform visual music. The subjects I choose range far and wide, but always they take me into uncharted territory, places where sometimes I invade the realm of science, and with the aid of music, bring the worlds of science and art closer together. The results of my endeavours take me round the world, presenting and performing at new media events devoted to subjects ranging from climate change and biological art, to art research and understanding music. Tuinga Lila Lila is an updated version of my earlier piece called Tuinga Lila. I'll explain these titles later. In the last years of his life, Alan Turing was concerned in the growth and form of living things, that is, the science of morphogenesis. It's not mentioned on his memorial plaque. For me, the true significance of this work dawned only after I delved into Turing's own paper on the subject and the many subsequent papers his work has inspired. Almost 60 years too late, it's now becoming evident that not content with taking us all into a new digital universe, Turing's insights into the nature of growth and form give promise of transforming our physical well-being and the environment in which we live. It's an immense achievement for which Turing received no credit in his short lifetime. Turinga Lila Lila is an attempt to set the record straight. Turing took his own life at the age of 41. Was his chosen method, a poisoned apple, influenced by the evil queen, I wonder? We'll never know. But in 1938, Turing saw Disney's film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs on its release in the UK. And as for many of us, it made a lasting impression. But now I'll return to the beginning of the story. An interest in growth and form was nothing new for Turing. He'd been fascinated by the subject ever since his school days. The clue is in this picture. Evidently, he's more interested in the botanical growth of daisies than in playing hockey. Computation played a part in this new endeavour because Turing carried out much of the arithmetic work on the Ferranti Mark I computer located in Manchester. Developed by Turing and his colleagues, it was the world's first commercially available digital computer. So what was Turing's purpose in reviving his schoolboy obsession? It was something more than biological growth, because over time he'd extended the range of his initial interest to embrace all biological species. He worked on the idea for a year or two, and then submitted a paper to the Royal Society in 1952. It was called The Chemical Basis of Morphogenesis. In his submission, he coined the term morphogens, with the intention that the word conveyed the idea of form producers. He regarded hormones and skin pigments as typical morphogens. Mathematical equations lie at the heart of Turing's paper, and it was these equations that provided the proof of his reaction diffusion system. But it took many years, 40 years in fact, before Turing patterns were first observed in laboratory experiments. During this long period of inaction, Turing's ideas were largely ignored, or at best greeted with considerable scepticism. But now, we not only know that his ideas are credible, but we're beginning to appreciate the full implications of his amazing insight. As I say, this realisation has happened very slowly. It started with scientific investigations which revealed that patterns showing arrangements of stripes and spots could arise spontaneously from random initial conditions. It was then observed that the skin patterns found in mammals and fish closely resembled Turing patterns just as Turing had predicted. Since these first experiments, ongoing investigations into the validity of Turing's ideas have continued to gain momentum. His reaction diffusion model has proved to be successful 
in revealing how self-regulated pattern formation occurs in the developing animal embryo. As a result, and not before time, Turing's proposal is now recognized as a masterpiece of mathematical modeling, which explains how spatial patterns develop autonomously. But remember that Turing, in his 1952 paper, had posed for himself fundamental questions extending way beyond fish and animal markings. So fundamentally, in fact, that the complete answers are still not known. Whether or not Turing's reaction diffusion system can be extended, as he predicted, to the more complex forms of bodies and anatomies, remains a subject of conjecture and much ongoing research. I'll return to Turing's far-reaching ambitions soon, but first I'm going to demonstrate how, for me, artistic potential in the form of visual music has been unleashed by his remarkable insights. My title really does need some explaining. The piece started out as Turingalila. This work is a pun on Turangalila from Olivier Messiaen's Turangalila Symphony. The composer derived his title from the Sanskrit words Turanga and Lila. So, knowing that Sanskrit spellings are very approximate, I couldn't resist converting Turanga into Turinga. The doubled Lila in my updated version of the piece means the play of creation. Nature has an irrepressible impulse to create patterns, and in my piece of visual music I've taken delight in doing just that. Some patterns happen without regard to any specific function. So it's at this level that computer simulations can elucidate, delight, surprise and entertain. This is my aim in creating Turinga Lila Lila. I can't simulate the chemical changes that underlie Turing's reaction diffusion system, but I can demonstrate the visual ramifications of his biological mathematics. My approach has been to take just two Turing patterns, a hexagonal stripe pattern and a hexagonal spot pattern, and then perturb these patterns in all sorts of ways to observe a process of continuous change and regeneration. I use a varied set of processing codes to achieve this end, and as ever, choose image sequences that appear to me to provide convincing illustrations of growth and form. The result is what I call serial imagery. In other words, with just two patterns, I've succeeded in generating an immensely varied range of visual options. So I've explained the sources of imagery for Tuenga Lila Lila, but what about the music itself? The piece I've chosen is Germaine Taifé's Sonata for Solo Clarinet. It's one of the few compositions where Taifé experimented with serialism although in the end she gave only a nod in the direction of the 12-tone system. Her heart wasn't in it. When you listen to her sonata, you hear only her inimitable style, which is predominantly neoclassical and lyrical. But still, the pattern of Typhaeus notes in her sonata retain enough of their serial intent for me to be able to match them against my serial imagery. It's at this level that I see the patterns of music and art forming together a synthesis of movement. To show you what I mean, I'm going to demonstrate a short extract from each of the sonata's three movements. The first movement of Turinga Lila Lila is based on a presentation of Turing's hexagonal stripe pattern, as you see here. The second movement is based on Turing's hexagonal spot pattern.
In the third movement, the Turing hexagonal stripe and hexagonal spot patterns are combined, one on top of the other. Now, having introduced you to some of the ideas underlying Turinga Lila Lila, I'll perform the piece in its entirety. Thank you. 
as you will have seen during my performance of Tuinga Lila Lila, an extraordinary diversity of forms emerges seemingly spontaneously from my image sequences. It seems that by interpreting Turing's ideas as a form of artistic expression, I've also discovered a purposeful tool for understanding natural processes. Turing himself, I think, would have taken delight in such a result, if only he'd lived in today's digital universe. It would have exemplified his conviction that complex biological growth can be achieved via simple natural mechanisms. But even now, not everyone agrees. Skepticism towards Turing's hypothesis remains in the minds of some scientists. Even as a non-scientist, I can see their point of view. It appears to defy common sense that mathematics can solve fundamental problems in biology. For this reason, it's only through hard-nosed scientific proof that doubts and scepticism towards Turing's theory can be dispelled. Fortunately, such proof is beginning to emerge. Biologists are now finding out what the mysterious morphogens are. Researchers have been able to identify the actual chemicals at work and what is even more exciting, they believe they may be able to use this knowledge to improve regenerative medicine in the future. Turing patterns are everywhere, in weather systems, in the constellations of galaxies, and the distribution of vegetation across the landscape, to name just a few. What's more, they can provide the means of extracting crucial knowledge from environmental data. Let's look at vegetation patterning as an example. Distinctive types of vegetation patterning can be observed in many semi-arid regions. Often these take the form of regular stripes on hillsides and irregular mosaics on flat ground. Such patterns can be hard to detect at ground level and in fact it was during flights over sub-Sahara Africa as long ago as the 1950s that they were first observed. Now, we recognise these as Turing patterns, and it is by first observing and then accurately interpreting these patterns that we can begin to make life-saving interventions between vegetation and climate change. Turing's global impact on science is now recognised, possibly more so outside his country of birth than within it. President Barack Obama when he addressed the UK Parliament in 2011, singled out Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin and Alan Turing as British contributors to science. At last, Turing has taken his rightful place alongside the great scientists of all time. But of course, this is primarily in recognition of his achievements in computer science and mathematics. His potentially most far-reaching contribution to science cut short by his suicide, remains relatively undiscovered. I've made some reference to just two areas of current concern, regenerative medicine and climate change, where Turing's morphogen theory is giving a lead in solving intractable problems. But there's still a long way to go. The controversy that surrounds Turing's morphogen theory is not over. While Turing patterns have been shown to exist in chemistry, their existence in some aspects of biology is open to question. In pigmentation production, for instance, their role is accepted, but on the subject of limb development, the jury is still out. This degree of controversy pinpoints the fact that much remains to be done to verify the validity of Turing's work. In summary, my overall purpose in bringing the worlds of art and science together in the form of visual music, is to shine a light on the as yet unexplored possibilities offered by Turing's morphogen theory. As a mechanism for investigating and understanding the processes of nature, it offers endless opportunities for future development and experiment.